Hi, welcome to Eric's Movie Corner. I'm Eric, and I'm here to talk about movies. Let's do it. I got a good one for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about the 1976 Carrie. This was an adaptation of a Stephen King novel. And for anybody who knows this movie, has seen it and likes it, uh, or for that matter, likes anything else Stephen King has published, you should write a thank you note to his wife, Tabitha. Apparently, back when Stephen King wrote this, he was having trouble with the female perspective, and after writing the first three pages of this, threw it in the wastebasket. Uh, his wife, Tabitha, took it out and said, no, you've got a good idea here, you should finish this. I can help you with the female perspective. Keep going. Finish this. And he did, and it was actually the first novel he ever published, and quickly got adapted into a screenplay, and thus the legend of Stephen King was born. So, thank you, Tabitha. This movie was directed by Brian De Palma, uh, who is a legend among directors. He is fantastic. This movie also has a star-studded cast. I'm not quite sure how famous everybody in this movie was at the time, uh, but they all went on to have long, successful careers. Sissy Spacek had the role of our titular character, Carrie. <laughs> I said titular. We also had Piper Laurie uh, playing the role of her mother. Uh, we had Nancy Allen in the role of Chris, who is the mean girl uh, that likes to pick on Carrie. Uh, PJ Souls played her friend Norma. Uh, we also had John Travolta uh, in the role of Billy, Chris's boyfriend. We also had Amy Irving in the role of Sue Snell and William Cat in the role of Tommy, Sue's boyfriend. A lot of people watch this movie and go, hey, I, when they see William Cat on the screen, they're like, I know that guy from somewhere. Well, you might recognize him from an 80s TV series called The Greatest American Hero. Uh, which was based on the premise of this dude finding a suit that was actually brought by aliens, uh, but did not come with an instruction manual. And it's a suit that gives you Superman-like powers, but he has no idea how to use it. Um, so it's as if a toddler had superpowers. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, so you might recognize William Cat from that role as well. I really like this movie. This movie is... I mean, it's classified as horror, and it, there's definitely horror in this movie, but I also feel it's kind of a tragedy. Um, the opening scene, I'm not going to feel bad about talking about this. It's not really a spoiler, because it's the very first thing that happens in the movie is the opening credits are happening. Um, but Carrie uh, is not great at gym class and is showering by herself and has her first menstruation. She has not been given any kind of sex education because her mother is a very strict religious type. Uh, so she has no idea what's happening. She thinks she's dying uh, and freaks out and asks the other girls for her help. The other girls proceed to uh, throw tampons and sanitary napkins at her while chanting, plug it up, plug it up. Uh, not very nice. Um, <laughs> So, uh, at this very moment, um, she starts to get her telekinesis powers, uh, and there's definitely a connection there between becoming a woman and gaining her powers. So, that's the setup for the movie. Um, I'm going to get into some plot elements and some clips after the spoiler alert. If you have not seen this movie, I would recommend watching it because it is a classic. It is dated. In particular, there's a couple of montage scenes in the movie set to very cheesy synth music. Uh, very 70s. <laughs> so, oh, it's a little cheesy uh, to watch that in 2021. But as a whole, the movie still stands up and everybody in it is good. And the climatic scene is still something to behold. So, I would highly recommend going and watching Carrie if you had not done so yet. Now the spoiler alert is up and I'm gonna go through some of the plot elements and some clips here. I just talked about the first scene in the movie where she was in the shower and got made fun of by the other girls because she didn't know what was happening when she got her period. Uh, but at least she can look forward to going home to a supportive mother, right?
your woman now. Why didn't you tell me, Mama? <laughs> and God made Eve from the rib of Adam. And if was mm. weak and loose, the raven on the world. Okay, maybe not so the supportive. The raven was called sin. Said. The raven Why was called sin. Why didn't you tell sin. me, Mama? Said. No. The raven was called sin. Ooh, woman. And the raven was called sin. And first sin was intercourse. First sin was intercourse. Oh, my goodness. I didn't sin, Mama. No. Say it. I didn't sin, Mama. First sin was intercourse. First sin was intercourse. First sin was intercourse. And the first sin was intercourse. Mama, I was so scared. I thought I was dying. And the girls, they all laughed at me and threw things at me, And Eve was weak. Say it. No, Mama. Eve was weak. No. Eve was weak. No. Eve was weak. Say it. No, Mama. Say it. Eve was weak. He was weak. And the Lord visited him with a curse. And the curse was a curse of blood. You should have told me, Mama. You should have told me. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not so supportive. Um, so, <laughs> the answer, uh, for Carrie's mother, the answer to everything is prayer. Um, and she goes to, uh, she locks Carrie in the closet and tells her to pray. Um, so yeah, this is Carrie in her closet here. Sweat and blood. Turn us a terrific stain. Oh my. Yeah. So that's life at home for Carrie. So she doesn't fit in in school. She has a domineering religious zealot of a mother. It's not a surprise when uh, later in the movie when she gets invited to the prom, that does not go well. I've been invited to the prom. Prom? Yeah, the senior prom. You <laughs> I know. love the timing of that lightning Everybody's strike. Going. It's that teacher that called, wasn't it? Please see that I'm not like you, Mom. I'm funny. I mean, all the kids think I'm funny. I don't want to be. I want to be normal. I want to start to try and be a whole person before it's too late for me to be. Oh, hell. His name's Tommy Ross, and he's a very nice boy, Mama. No. And he promised to stop him and I leave you no. before him and my minute. Mama, I'm no. accepted, no. Mama. No, 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 no. I'm accepted, Mama. I'm accepted. Come to your closet. No. He's a nice boy, Mama. You like him. You really like him, Mama. Boys. <laughs> the boys. The boys. Yes, the boys. <laughs> To the blood come the boys, like sniffing dogs, running and slobbering and trying to find out where that smell comes from. Where the smell is, that smell. Listen, I know where they take and that cars. I've seen it all right. Well, you're not going. Already oh, said I would. Tell that boy you're not going or we're going to move from here. No. You'll move from here and you'll never see that boy again. The rain's coming in. Mom, please sit down. Mom, please sit down. Tell her, Carrie. I'm going, Mama. And things are gonna change around here. Which? <sighs> of course. It's Satan's power. It has nothing to do with Satan, Mama. It's me. So things at home not getting any better for Carrie. Uh, so eventually she ends up going to the prom. Now here, I want to focus not on the plot so much, but there is a very awesome shot done by Brian De Palma here. Uh, keep in mind, this was made back in the 70s, and they didn't have the fancy technology that they have these days with uh, motion-controlled cameras and everything, uh, with the computer control everything and make sure it was dead on to the millisecond. Um, they just had to do it while it was happening. So uh, I want to take you through this shot here. 
Now, this is going to start with somebody collecting the ballot for prom king and queen at Carrie's table. And notice how long this goes through the shot without a cut. This is going to go for over two minutes here, but it's fascinated if you're all interested in filmmaking because he moves the camera through the entire gymnasium uh, and ends up shooting back to where it started. Check this out. So there's Norma taking the ballot. Bitch. Yeah, she's not a nice, she's not a nice person. So now she's doing her thing. We're moving across the gym. Getting more ballots. Still no cuts. Yep, okay, so she's got her pile of ballots. He's going over here. Here, one of our partners in crime. Does the old switcheroo here. Kick the ballots under the table. Still no cuts. And whip out the new pile of ballots, all for Tommy and Carrie. Take them over and give them to the teachers. Still no cuts. Now we're moving over here to the stage. She knocks there to let Chris know that everything is on. She's down there with her boyfriend, Billy. Go back to the corner of the stage. Here comes Snoo, Sue. Here comes Sue. She snuck in. Uh, and there, camera got transferred onto a crane, which is following the rope up and over the stage to where the fateful bucket of blood is, waiting to rain terror upon the prom. And then the camera angles down. We still have no cuts here. I got transferred on the crane and pulled all the way up here without stopping. And then we angled down and looked back, all the way back across the den, where Carrie and Tommy are sitting at their table still. So I just think that is an awesome little piece of filmmaking there. And I wanted to bring that to your attention. So next time you watch the movie, you can pay attention to that. Then the next thing I'm going to show you here, this is right before um, all hell breaks loose uh, because this is the actual prank. There is a long build up to this moment as Carrie and Tommy approach the stage and Sue figures out what's going on, but they get thrown out of the prom because she's not supposed to be there. And then we get this shot here, which I think has been misinterpreted by many people. Um, because one of the famous things in this movie is Carrie's mother telling her, they're all going to laugh at you. In fact, in the mid-90s, Adam Sandler, uh, on one of his comedy albums, did a bit uh, where there was a teenage girl trying to talk to her mom, and the only thing her mom would say is, they're all going to laugh at you. So this has been parodied. But at the same time, I've been watching some reaction videos to this movie online, and a bunch of people think that what Carrie's seeing here when things go kaleidoscope is reality, but I don't think it is reality uh, because as far as I can tell in this scene, the only people actually laughing are Norma, which is why I called her a bitch earlier, uh, and one other guy, and everybody else is horrified by what has happened here. Uh, but Carrie has been so beaten down by her mother and thinking that nobody likes her and everybody's going to laugh at her that that's what she perceives at this moment. So check it out. There's Sue uh, trying to tell everybody what's going on. But uh, teacher's having none of it, throwing her out. Carrie's got tears coming down her face because she's so happy that she won prom queen. And they're upset and uh, Tommy doesn't know what's going on. So he's just kind of laughing. And then here's Chris pulling her prank. So everybody stops clapping because what just happened is horrific. See, now nobody's nobody's laughing. Nobody's laughing. 
Except for Norma, right here, because she's a bitch. <laughs> and she's starting to register what just happened and is absolutely horrified. Tommy's mad. He's yelling, what the hell? Um, and then, right here, the bucket hits Tommy on the head and knocks him out. I don't know if that was a fatal blow, but it's kind of beside the point, as you'll see if you watch the movie. Uh, and there's Norma laughing again, because she's a horrible person. And here's where Carrie just... This is her wor worst nightmare. And I believe that what she's seeing right here, none of this is actually happening. This is, this is all in her mind, uh, because her mother convinced her that everyone was, that everyone was gonna laugh at her. Uh, and so we've got that kaleidoscope here. See, because the teacher would not laugh. The teacher would definitely not laugh. And she's horrified. And I'm going to stop it right there. Because you should really just watch the movie if you want to see what happens next. Because Carrie gets pissed. Once again, her very loving, supportive mother tries to kill her. Because thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Um... But Carrie tries to defend herself right here. Um, using her telekinesis. And uses all these implements from the kitchen um, to dispatch her mother. And oof. Yeah, this is a... Yikes. Um, but notice here that after she's done with her death throes she ends up in a very particular position Carrie looks up and realizes that her mother is dead and then notices this might have been subliminal on Carrie's part because of an influence, um, which I'm going to show you in just a second, but as we get the pan out here, eventually uh, we see the complete pose of Carrie's mother. Yeah. So... Uh, if you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm going to show you pictures here and here. Hey, look! What does she remind you of? Um, and seeing her mother there in that pose, um, just... Carrie just snaps, pulls her mom down, and uses her telekinesis to make the house implode around them. So, basically, everybody is dead. <laughs> Except for Sue. It's a tragic, tragic movie. All Carrie ever wanted was to fit in. All she wanted was acceptance. Uh, but she couldn't get acceptance at school. Uh, she couldn't get acceptance from her mother. Um, and ultimately uh, ended up being even less accepted because of her telekinesis that she developed uh, when she became a woman. So that's all really tragic. Um, but this movie is really well done. And I, I revisit it uh, frequently just because I think it's such a well-made movie. So that's Carrie from 1976. There have been, uh, there was, I think, a sequel at some point, And there have been a couple of remakes slash re-adaptations of the novel. Uh, in my opinion, none of them even come close to touching this movie here. Uh, this one is a classic. So... I hope you enjoyed hearing me talk about Carrie today. If you did, please give it a like below. Uh, and if you'd like to hear more of what I'm doing on this channel, subscribe and hit the notification button so you know when I've posted something new. Thanks for stopping by Eric's Movie Corner. Come back next time.